Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We got a uh, pretty tedious question ahead, but uh, one that is worth investigation. Uh, so the statement reads, recall that a covariant four vector is obtained from a contravariant one by changing the sign of the zeroth component. The same goes for tensors. When you lower an index to make it covariant, you change the sign if that index is zero. Compute the tensor invariance. So we have F, the electromagnetic field and tensor of mu nu with itself, the dual tensor mu nu, and the field tensor with the dual tensor. And uh, we want to calculate these invariants in terms of E and B. We want to compare this with something we found earlier uh, with the uh, results of E uh, dot B in terms of being invariant. So let's go ahead and just dive on in. All right, so F, as we know, is the electromagnetic field and tensor. This gives us the inhomogeneous equations, the homogeneous. As you see, they're pretty similar. And in fact, they're related if you just do a quick swap of things. Uh, the book has plenty of resource on this, and there's actually plenty more online. But here's what we're dealing with as far as their tensors. Again, mu, rho, um, new column. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, so on and so forth. Now let's go ahead and uh, write out what these invariants need to look like. All right, so here we know we're going to have a lot of components. And the reason why is because we have uh, F mu nu times F mu nu, which means that we have to multiply um, and sum over every component of uh, mu and nu. Notice that they both run from 0 to 3, so we're going to have quite a bit of uh, calculation to do. So that being said, let's write out the summations. We have 0, 0, 0, 0, and then all of these here, and you'll see why I put them in red, uh, because they all have a 0 component, and then, uh, you know, if we just list out all the combinations that need to be sifted through as far as their summations are concerned. Um, what we realize is that in order for us to change the signage on them, uh, well, let me rephrase, in order for us to put them to the uh, contravariance, what we have to do is change the sign, so that's why they're all in red. We had a double here because we had a double zero. Then we just get a minus here because uh, we only had one zero component, one zero component, and so on and so forth. So red, 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 all these red negatives come from switching those. All right, now that we're done with that and we showcased how and why, now we're gonna actually go into examining what these uh, uh, these uh, products that we're actually doing. And let's see what happens when we plug in zeros. All right, so we have a bunch of squared terms here as expected. And so anything that had a main diagonal term or matching indice 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, they all go to zero as defined by the field tensor indice uh, locations in the no page. Everything else, the things up here, the things down here, all of these three, all of those three, they have compart or uh, components that are E and B fields. So let's see how we simplify this down. So these negative reds up here, those are these components here, all squared. And of course, we have to plug this one in here. These two go to those two. And so we're just literally plugging in all the component values. And now we're trying to simplify. Notice, noticing that the uh, square gets rid of the negative signs on the other EX term and EY term and so forth. We actually have two of them here that are negative. So we just join together. Similarly, with the B field components, we have two of each of them. So we can uh, combine them together. Again, just a little more algebra. And we see that we uh, have a combination here of two times B squared minus E squared over C squared, or B dot B, E dot E. And uh, so yeah, the invariant here shows us this. Um, and when we compare this to the other results, you'll see it actually makes sense. So let's continue. All right which apart from the constant factor of negative two divided by C squared is the invariant we found in problem 
For the dual tensor, let's note that the same process is used to calculate the invariant. However, we can shortcut this by understanding that the dual tensor was made from the uh, field tensor using the substitutions down here. This is what I mentioned in the no page summary. Um, this was also given to us in the book and it is much easier to deal with. That being said, if we apply these, we see what we get in terms of our yielding, which looks very similar, except kind of backwards. Um, since both of these tensors are anti-symmetric, we can shortcut and calculate the uh, field of the dual tensor invariant, or the, uh, maybe one. We can uh, shortcut the calculations of the field dual invariant as such. So here, we have to do the same procedure. Uh, we have to put this to the contravariant. So we uh, put them negative signs where we need to. And uh, that double negative here, negative, 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 all that stuff. Again, it being um, what we would say is uh, anti-symmetric, we only have to calculate a few of them. And then it's the reciprocal over. So we can um, put the negative signs there when needed. Canceling all the two two terms, since that main, or the, uh, matching indice terms, since that is the main diagonal, we can be okay there. Um, here though, what we're seeing that's going on is a lot of busy work, uh, cause whenever we switch the, um, whenever we switch these into their forms, we had to cancel, cancel, and that's what we see here. We see that because of their anti-symmetric nature, one zero and zero one, it's the same at the cost of a minus sign. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 1 is the same at the cost of a minus sign. And we do this, of course, for a lot of the matching indices. Red for zero components, blue for non-zero components. And we see that we have a lot of cancellations of the same thing due to the double negatives. That being said, we're able to join together in blocks of two like this. So that was the point of doing that by doubling and, um, well, by flipping in order to cancel everything and then doubling them, we get exactly what we expect. In this first term here, with all the negatives, we get um, what looks like a two over C, E dot B. And then down here, we get a positive, except now we have to take out a negative from the um, E, B, E fields there. And so we actually get another negative. And then what happens is down here, you see them joining together quite nice. And we get negative four over C E dot B. Um, none of these are too hard in particular, but dang, are they gross. And by gross, they mean tedious. Using tricks like uh, changing um, from the covariant to contravariant, that's just a necessity for the invariant product. And then you do uh, the work with the anti-symmetric nature of them, and we can kind of tidy things up. Of course, you don't have to type out every component, I just did that because I felt it was necessary to show how it's done. Uh, that being said, uh, what we need to take note of is that the matching indices canceling to zero, that shortcut can make our lives really quick, really fast. Um, so try to make your life as easy as possible and uh, we'll catch you at the next one.